Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Dubai, season one, episodes two and three. Yes, I know I'm late. That's why it's a double recap. But when I tell you, I have quite a lot to say. So far, I'm liking the season a lot. I know I said that Ayan is that girl. She's the star of the show. I do want her to just tone it down a little bit. I still like her. I still think she's funny. I don't like seeing a housewife, especially a new housewife at that, try so hard to be the star of the show. Now, before we jump into it, I keep seeing some reports about Caroline Stanberry's husband, Sergio, having some racist tweets or whatever. I was trying to find them. I didn't see anything. But let me tell you something right now. With all the nonsense that we've been dealing with on prior franchises, we see Miss Diana Jenkins on Beverly Hills. Her racism jumped out. Jenny Wynn from SLC last season, she was fired, rightfully so. If that's the case with Sergio, then we don't need to see him or Caroline Stanberry on our TV screens. And I've always felt a way about Caroline Stanberry. So if that is the case that she married a racist, I wouldn't be surprised. But y'all, with all that being said, let's just hop right on into this recap because we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up episode two with Caroline Brooks and Lisa meeting up for dinner. And the way I want to call Caroline Brooks K. Michelle so bad, I mean, they look just alike. Oh my gosh. We learned that Caroline Brooks and Lisa have known each other for quite some time. Brooks says that she met Lisa when Lisa was pregnant with, I think, her second child. So anyhow, they're talking about the whole mess with Ayan at Nina's dinner. Brooks goes on to say that her and Ayan have a love-hate relationship, how they fight like sisters, but at the same time, Ayan annoys the mess out of her. Now, in my opinion, I don't really see them having this strong friendship, and Brooks seems very messy. I don't really think that Brooks is able to be a true friend to anybody, I just think of her as a flip-flopper. And also, I found it really funny because at one point in the conversation, Caroline Brooks brought up how her grandmother is 100% Jamaican. And we all know that Lisa's Jamaican. So when she said that, Lisa says in her confessional, I swear Brooks has a personality disorder because one minute she's Afro-Latina, the next minute she's Caribbean, the next minute she's this, she's that. Like she can't make up her mind. I couldn't stop laughing when Lisa said that. You could tell she was fed up. Like, honey, make up your mind, please. <laughs> so now Caroline Brooks brings up Nina and Caroline Stanberry's friendship, and she wants to know when they got so close. And my first thought was, why do you care so much? Like, why are you keeping tabs on who's friends with who? It seems like Caroline Brooks wants to be Caroline Stanberry's best friend. I don't know if I'm reading that wrong, but that's the impression that I get. Now, Lisa bringing up how Nina originally didn't like Caroline Stanberry, I could see Lisa revealing that soon in an upcoming episode and her and Nina having problems going forward. Now we jump to the next scene and it's Caroline Stanberry at home and she has Caroline Brooks and Sarah over. So while they're all outside talking and catching up, Caroline reveals that they're building their dream house and they have to be out of this house in the next few months. So we learned that in Dubai, you pretty much have to jump through hoops in order to purchase a house. She goes on to say that because she's self-employed, she has to put about 30 to 40% as a down payment. Now, I wasn't so surprised hearing this because it seems like things are a lot stricter in Dubai. It just seems like, you know, you have to go through a lot of measures to purchase a home or a car. And I remember hearing that in Dubai, they have like one and two digit license plates and they run about 30 to $40 million. I don't know what the hype is over a one digit license plate, but I guess it's all the rage in Dubai and that's how much they're going for. Oh, and I love how a lot of you guys who do live in Dubai were in my comment section letting me know what it's like to live there. 
I'm just so fascinated by it all. So please keep all the information coming. I love it. And I do want to visit sometime soon. So anyhow, the conversation changes gears and now they start discussing Nina's dinner that went left. So Caroline Brooks goes on to say that Chanel Ayan's energy was off that night and how she felt bad for her because it was clear that Ayan was hurt about not being invited to Caroline Stanberry's hen party. So she continues on by adding that Ayan has a beautiful heart and how not being invited probably added to her trauma. No, I said, Brooks, save your breath because you know how Caroline Stanberry is. She doesn't have any emotion. She's very cold, very nasty. So I don't think she cares about how Chanel Lyon felt about not being invited because you were really expecting Caroline Stanberry to care when we all know she doesn't. And just like I said, Caroline Stanberry was not moved. She was like, she's traumatized over not being invited to a hen party, really? And then when she said, look, if she's traumatized, that's fine, but don't add to my trauma. At the end of the day, you can't force anybody to be friends. If Caroline Stanberry does not see it for Chanel Ayan, then it is what it is. I want them all to stop begging Caroline to give Chanel Ayan a chance. I want Ayan to stop begging for Caroline Stanberry to give her a chance and just move on and let the chips fall where they may. Me personally, I'll be damned if I let Caroline Stanberry think that I'm pressed about not being invited to her party. I would be paying Stanberry dust. And if we're being honest, Caroline Stanberry lives for that. Because if you watch Ladies of London, you remember how she was. That whole show was based around her and all the rest of the women vying for her approval. Now this next scene with Ayan and Nina meeting up for lunch, Ayan, the outfit was gorgeous. She had on this fur, a cute bob wig. I mean, it was a look. I was low key getting heat stroke looking at Ayan in this scene. I was like, girl, if you don't take this fur off. So now they're talking about their Thanksgiving plans. Nina's super excited. She says that even though these holidays aren't celebrated in Dubai, she still enjoys keeping up the tradition. So now Ayan brings up Nina's dinner and she wants to know why Nina did not defend her. So Nina's like, look, you and Caroline Stanberry aren't that close. It's not that deep. Let's move on and call it a day. Personally, I was on Nina's side in this conversation. I felt the same way too. Like, one, you and Stanberry aren't friends like that. Again, you can't force somebody to invite you somewhere or be your friend. I guess I just get upset seeing Ayan be so bothered by Caroline Stanberry. Ayan is way too beautiful. She has a lot going on. Caroline Stanberry, not so much. Let's face it, everybody on this cast, except for Caroline Stanberry, is it. I like pretty much everybody except for Caroline Stanberry. So it's like, once again, Ayan, don't even give Caroline S that satisfaction of seeing you press that you didn't get an invite. She loves stuff like that. I know for me personally, if I don't like you and you have a party, an event, whatever, and you invite everybody else and not me, I'm not feeling any way about it. I'm very good at ignoring people that I don't like. I was really lost hearing Ayan say that she was triggered. I'm like, again, like Nina said, it shouldn't be that deep. You guys don't like each other, so why would you expect to be invited? These next short scenes where we see Caroline and Sergio at the mall and she was trying on a $5.6 million necklace. The necklace was gorgeous, but I'm still wondering, okay, does Sergio have money for all this? I know a few of you guys were telling me that Sergio comes from a very wealthy family and that he was a football player himself. And while that might be so, Something in my gut just feels like he's using her. But again, y'all say he has money, so I'm gonna take your word for it. I thought the next scene with Lisa and her son grocery shopping was so cute. He was sitting up there eating all those Oreos while she was on FaceTime with Nina. I said, <laughs> honey, he was crunching down. Cause she said, okay, honey, one cookie. And he had like three or four. He was like, she's distracted, so I'm going to, take full advantage. <laughs> but I thought it was really interesting that in the grocery stores in Dubai, 
they have a Muslim section and a non-Muslim section. And so that's where Lisa was shopping. But I think it's really cool that, you know, she still celebrates Thanksgiving living there. And she was stocking up on all the food. I said, I know that food is going to be everything and then some. Because you already know she's going to have the jerk chicken, the fried chicken, the turkey, and then the mac and cheese, the yams. Like, what? Let me not go off on a tangent talking about the food because you already know my mouth is watering as we speak. This next scene with Nina and her family and Sarah and her son celebrating Thanksgiving together was really cute. They were having Thanksgiving on a high rise. I said, that's how you do it. I really like Nina's husband. He is very handsome. And finding out that he's a banker in crypto, making a whole bunch of money. And I couldn't stop laughing when Sarah was asking them, well, can you give me some tips on how to have a happy marriage? And he was like, basically, I let her do whatever she wants. Like, that's the key. I said, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was screaming at Sarah's son spilling the tea because when she was like, yeah, you know, I've been married twice before. And her son said, no, mom, you've been married three times. She was like, what? <laughs> so now we see Thanksgiving dinner at Lisa's house. And I loved how they were eating dinner outside. And she had Chanel Ayan and her family over. So when I tell you that that food looked amazing and Lisa knows how to cook. She had curried prawns, shrimp, jerk chicken, mac and cheese, yams. I said, that's how you do it. Oh, before I forget, Ayan comes through with a baby goat to give to Lisa. I was like, Ayan, really? It was going to kill you to bring over a bottle of wine? Please don't bring me a pet that I didn't ask for. Bring me a cute candle, a bottle of wine, a pie. Don't bring me a goat. And you saw the goat was running around going crazy. He jumped in the pool. Ayan's son had to go over there and take him out. It was like, really? And I also didn't like how Ayan was discussing all the drama between Caroline Stanberry and Nina at the table. This isn't Thanksgiving dinner conversation. Nobody wants to hear about anybody's issues and problems while they're trying to enjoy a holiday meal. That wasn't the time or place for it. And I was like, Ayan, once again, sis, I like you and all, but stop being so obnoxious. Also, not being invited to a party of someone who doesn't like you, that shouldn't be the end of the world. So now we end this episode with Sarah and Ayan hanging out at Sarah's house. We learn more about Ayan's upbringing. She says that she lived really well. And then all of a sudden, one day her father just did not want to be a father anymore. She goes on to say that her mom was uneducated and because of that, she developed a work ethic and she would help buy food for the family. Now, let me just say this, listening to Ayan's story was very sad. I was getting choked up when she told that story about her being tied to a tree, awful. I would not speak to him either because how can you even do something so evil like that to your own child? But the episode ends with Sarah sharing her pain about how she was mentally and physically abused in her past marriages and how she would do anything to be loved. And I have to say, it's great that Sarah seems to be very confident and it seems like, you know, she's really coming into her own and she's really moving forward in her life despite what she's been through. I thought it was a very touching scene between Sarah and Ayan. We got to learn more about them and their upbringing. So we get into episode three and we started off with Lisa and Chanel Ayan and they are getting ready for Lisa's fashion show. We all know that Lisa has a maternity line called Mina Row, and it's doing really well. Now she wants to get into non-maternity clothes. We learned that Lisa's husband is the CFO of Mina Rose. He's an investor, but the thing is, he wasn't a big believer in her brand until she started making some money. And that's usually how it goes. People never believe in you until you blow up and prove them wrong. Ask me how I know. I told you guys my story about how, you know, when I first started my YouTube channel, you had haters talking about, girl, nobody's going to watch. It's not going to do well. Everybody's doing it. YouTube is oversaturated. And what? Now we're over 12,000 subscribers and Bravo knows who I am. What was that again? I thought so. <laughs>
listen, if you have a talent, if you have a dream, remember that God put the vision in your heart. So if everybody doesn't believe in you, that's fine. But as long as you believe in yourself, that's really all that matters. But let me not go off on a tangent because we'll be here all day. But anyhow, Lisa's going over the details of the show. The first half is going to be maternity clothes. And then the second half is going to be regular clothes. Now we learned that Ayan has a modeling agency. Remember that she's a supermodel, so it makes sense. And she's brought a bunch of models for Lisa to check out and see if she wants to hire them for her show. I thought it was funny when Lisa was telling the story of how she met Chanel and she was saying that she had booked her for one of her shows, but she thought she was getting two models. She was unaware that Chanel goes by both names, Chanel or Ayan. So she said, I thought I booked one model Chanel and then another one Ayan. Then when I saw it was only one model by the same name, I said, oh. And it's just so funny how Chanel goes by her first or her last name. Now we jump to the next scene and we see Caroline Stanberry with Nina. They're having like a sleepover with their kids at the Atlantis Resort. Now, if you've been to the Atlantis Resort in Bahamas, it is absolutely stunning, gorgeous. And the fact that they have that same resort in Dubai, I was like, oh my gosh, I wanna go and check the Dubai one out. But when I tell you their suite was stunning, I mean, five star all the way. And a quick side note, when Caroline arrived to the resort, she had on this yellow crop top. And for the life of me, I've always been a bit confused. I feel like I hear a lot of mixed things when it comes to the attire in Dubai. Because when Caroline said, you can wear what you want to wear, it's all about respect. I said, but that doesn't really answer our question because I want to know, in general, is wearing a crop top while you're just out and about during the daytime, is that acceptable? For anybody who lives in Dubai, can you please let me know? Are you allowed to walk around with a crop top on? Let me know. And when Caroline went on to say that in Dubai, staycations are super popular, I could definitely see that. You guys let me know that from New York to Dubai, it's 13 hours. So I can only imagine it's probably the same distance if you went to the Caribbean from Dubai. Again, let me know. Caroline Stanberry and Nina's kids are loving the suite. Like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. They had a surprise for the kids. They went in the bathroom and it's like a whole aquarium in the bathroom. And they had a scuba diver in there with a sign welcoming them to the hotel. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to stay there. Just amazing. And it was so funny when Nina said, I mean, living in Dubai, it feels like an endless vacation. And it seems like it's kind of hard to not want to spoil your kids. Now, if you've been watching me for some time, you already know what I'm going to bring up. Can we discuss the food in this scene for a few minutes? Did y'all see those platters? They had the fabulous platter of sushi. They had French fries. They had cheeseburger sliders, pizza, flatbread. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so now Caroline and Nina start talking and they bring up how their friendship came a very long way. Nina brings up how she didn't like Caroline at first. She thought she was standoffish, very cold. And Caroline thought that Nina was very boring. Now I said, Caroline, everybody can't be wrong about you. I mean, ever since you've been on TV, everybody has said that you're very standoffish, very cold, very dry. Like, that's how you are. Like, it's not everybody else, it's you. And when she was like, it's not that I'm rude, it's just that I'm very socially awkward, like I don't like small talk. And I said, okay, girl. Because remember, on your previous show, you prided yourself on being an ice queen. So miss me with all that. No, it's not that I'm just very socially awkward. Like, no, you're not. Or I think she said she has social anxiety, but I said, either way, I don't buy it. 
I think that she enjoys being standoffish, being rude to people, and having people jump through hoops for her friendship. And then we see Caroline's daughter Yasmin come over. She's 15 and so they're joking around because Caroline brings up how Sergio actually wants to have a child. And I was screaming because her daughter was looking at her like, mom, stop it. Like surely you're just saying this for TV and some camera time because I know you're not about to bring another child in this world. <laughs> so now we jump to another fun scene with Lisa Chanel Ion and Caroline Brooks having lunch. Lisa is hoping that Caroline Brooks and Ion can resolve their issues and be at peace. I thought it was kind of funny because Chanel brought this pot of lemons as a peace offering to Caroline Brooks. I thought that was really cute and it reminded me of Shannon Bador from OC because if you watch OC then you know that Shannon believes that you always have nine lemons in a bowl for like peace and tranquility. <laughs> so Caroline Brooks starts off the conversation and says, look, about Nina's dinner the other night, we all said things that we didn't mean and we all have regrets. Then she goes on to say how she was hurt by Chanel because they went from talking every morning to now all of a sudden Ayan wasn't talking to her. Then she says, it feels like you iced me out. So Chanel says, look, I was going through a lot during that time. My husband was away in America for a month because his sister is sick, my mom is sick, and I couldn't deal. She goes on to add that she had an anxiety attack and, you know, she was just all over the place emotionally. So Ayan goes on to add that she just couldn't deal when Brooks called her up with the news about how Caroline Stanberry didn't invite her. She was just over it. So Brooks apologizes for hurting Ayan's feelings and that Caroline Stanberry never said any such thing about inviting the most important people. She goes on to say it was just a joke. It was witty banter. Now, again, Caroline Brooks, what you did was very petty and very messy. You already know that Ayan and Caroline Stanberry don't have any sort of friendship. They don't get along. So you definitely added fuel to the fire by saying, oh yeah, girl, she said she's only inviting VIPs and you're not one of them. Like, that's petty. And if that's your friend, why would you rub it in her face anyhow? So Ayan goes on to say how she's known Caroline Stanberry longer than anybody else. And she feels like Stanberry purposely snubbed her and she wanted to hurt her. Again, Ayan, you really have to make peace with the fact that you and Stanberry just aren't friends. And like I said, don't give Caroline Stanberry the satisfaction of her even thinking that you're pressed about not being invited to her party. I would be paying her dust. Okay, I wasn't invited. All right, you know, it is what it is. We're not friends. That's okay. So now Lisa chimes in and says that Caroline Stanberry needs to apologize to Chanel. Then she goes on to say that Caroline Stanberry is very calculated and it was a very bitchy move for her to exclude Ayan. Now, Lisa, I'm a bit confused because the way you were smiling up in Caroline Stanberry's face at the hen party, I just thought you loved her to pieces. Also, if you felt so strongly about Caroline Stanberry snubbing your friend, then why did you go to her hen party in the first place? Because if I felt like that wasn't right, I wouldn't have attended. And you could tell that Caroline Brooks doesn't really care too much for Lisa and Ayan's close friendship because the way she was like, I mean, they always team up together. It's like they share a brain. And when she was like, you know, they're like two peas in a pod, dumb and dumber, pinky in the brain. I was like, mm-hmm. I have my good eye on Miss Caroline Brooks, AKA K. Michelle. <laughs> this next scene with Sarah doing a photo shoot, I really liked it. I think that Sarah is a very beautiful woman. Sarah favors quite a few people. I can't pinpoint exactly who, but when it comes to me, I'll let you know. But anyway, at her photo shoot, we learned that she used to be a fashion designer for 20 years and then she moved into the tech world. I think Sarah's background is super cool, knowing that she owns four tech companies. When she said that she went bankrupt twice, I was like, oh my gosh. But it shows you that you can truly bounce back from anything. So we learned that this photo shoot is for some articles that she secured in Europe and the Western world. And she goes on to say that the article is going to be about Arab women in the tech world. So now we flip to the next scene with both Carolines meeting up for a spa day. 
we find out that Caroline Stanberry is a brand ambassador for this med spa and she gets all these expensive procedures for free. I said, I know that's right. And the hate low key jumped out with Caroline Brooks because when she said low key, Caroline Stanberry lives in a dream world because she gets a lot of stuff for free. And I don't understand why because she's not that influential. I said, ooh. <laughs> Because I'm sure if you got free procedures for free, you wouldn't be complaining. And Caroline Brooks was also really messed up when she was like, yeah, plastic surgery in Dubai is very common, very popular. And Sarah's gotten everything done from top to bottom. And then when they showed her before and after pictures, I was like, that's really messed up. So while Caroline Stanberry is getting her procedure done, you have Caroline Brooks relaying all the information of what went down at the lunch that she had with Lisa and Chanel Ayan. She says that Chanel is ready to make peace and move forward and how Lisa said that Caroline Stanberry needs to apologize to Chanel. So Caroline S is upset. She's like, Lisa's a little gnat. She's just very annoying. And then she remarks how Lisa and Chanel Ayan are attached at the hip. Now, when Lisa, Chanel, and Caroline Brooks went out to eat, I was thinking, Lisa, keep quiet, don't say too much, because you know how Caroline Brooks is, very messy, and you already know she's gonna run back and tell Caroline Stanberry everything that was said at this lunch. I wouldn't be saying a whole lot around Caroline B. She's a bit too messy for my taste. So now we get to the night of Lisa's fashion show, and Lisa is super nervous, anxious, but very excited. So we learn that all the ladies are attending except for Caroline Stanberry. Caroline Stanberry texted Lisa the day of saying that she can't make it because she's just so stressed out and so overwhelmed by all the wedding stuff. Now we all know that's BS. Everybody knows Caroline Stanberry has a nasty attitude and she just didn't want to go. And that was her way of being nasty and shady. And also, if you were to ever cancel on me the day of like that through text, you don't even have the decency to call me, we would never be friends again. Like some things you just don't do because it just shows a lack of respect. So while Lisa and Chanel are getting ready for the show, we see the models scrambling around. They're all excited and nervous. And now we see all the guests arriving. So we see Nina, Sarah, and Caroline Brooks arrive. Now, Nina, I love food as much as the next person, but you were driving me nuts the way you kept bugging the waiters for french fries. I was like, sis, you will not die if you don't have french fries at this event. I'm sure you can Uber Eats some french fries when you get home. It's not gonna kill you. And she would not stop. She was like, can I have french fries? But I want french fries. Do you have french fries? I want french fries. I need french fries. I was like, girl, you didn't come here for that. And if you want a french fry so bad, you should have had some before you got there. So while the show's about to start, we flip over to Caroline and Sergio popping champagne and Caroline saying that she wasn't ready to deal with all the drama and that's why she didn't go to the fashion show. And I said, girl, let's be real. You honestly feel out of your element in this cast because you know these girls will eat you up. Because on Ladies of London, you were the one calling all the shots and nobody ever challenged you but because you can't really hold your own against these women, now all of a sudden you don't want to go. If Dubai gets greenlit for a season two, I don't want to see Caroline Stanberry come back. So now we flip back to the fashion show, and when I tell you the models looked amazing, I loved how they had the fake bellies for them too. I mean, all the clothes, maternity and non-maternity, looked amazing. Lisa did that, and there was this really gorgeous white dress that she had towards the end, that I really want, I was like, okay, that's it. Like, I need that. So now the show's over and they move on to the after party and Nina is still bothering the waiter for french fries. And then when she got the french fries, I didn't love how she asked the waiter for ketchup. It just sounded a bit too entitled for me. I was like, girl, you finally got your french fries, just shut up and eat them. You're not gonna die if you don't get any ketchup or any sauce with them. I just didn't like the way she was acting like a spoiled child. But they all toast to Lisa doing a great job and then they bring up Stanberry not coming and you could tell that nobody really believes that Stanberry is this overwhelmed about wedding stuff. 
especially Lisa. She's like, girl, stop. Like, I don't buy it. And that's where the episode ends. But y'all, I'm enjoying Dubai. And it looks like this next episode is going to be some mess between Lisa, Caroline Stanberry, and Sergio. But y'all, I hope you all enjoyed my recap. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.